What are the odds that the toughest ticket in sports, as well as one of the most rare athletic achievements in sports is happening later this month in St. Andrews, both in Canada and Scotland. So the 150th British Open, now called the Open, tees off July 14th. A star-studded field, Colin Morikawa back to defend his title. John Rahm, uh, Justin Thomas, Rory McIlroy. Will Tiger make another comeback for the ages? No fewer than 1.3 million people applied for ticket credentials. And from what we understand, about 300,000 spectators will be on hand at the 150th Open in the town of St. Andrews, Scotland, the birthplace of golf and a town of 11,000 people, a town that my father called home before he left for Canada in 1957. What a lot of people don't know is that the prestige of the old course, as well as St. Andrews, Scotland, is due to a large degree to the events of July 9th, 1960. Arnold Palmer single-handedly put St. Andrew, Scotland and the Open on the map. It's a story we explore in great detail in Big Little Legends in chapter 12, where Arnie, uh, when it gets right down to it, called the Open the most revered championship in all of golf. And then he uh, did everything he could to uh, make that trek across the Atlantic Ocean back in a day when it wasn't that easy uh, to really establish St. Andrews in the hearts and minds of the golf community all over the world. Now, Dad left a few years before that pivotal moment in golf history, and he had no idea how his life story would come full circle in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. Now, it is named after the home of golf, but this little seaside town of less than 2,000 people was first settled in 1783 by loyalists who fled north after the American Revolution. The Algonquin was established in 1889. It is Canada's first seaside resort. The Algonquin, without question, is something that is one of New Brunswick's most iconic facilities. Uh, presidents dating back as far as both Teddy Roosevelt and Franklin Roosevelt and Prime Ministers, uh, Sir John A. Macdonald, have stayed at, at this particular establishment. And as far as the golf is concerned, the nine-hole layout was built in 1894. Now this is right on the Bay of Fundy, the home of the world's highest tides. And St. Andrews is also where this story of remarkable athletic longevity will unfold on July 15th. Everything has led to this, to the best of our knowledge and research. Jim Maxwell, my father, only former pro golfer in the history of the world to have competed in a four generational foursome four years in a row. It all takes place on the same day of the second round of the British Open back in his hometown of St. Andrews, Scotland. And, and I think this four generational invitational tournament that is held in his honor is, is more than just a tournament or one man's legacy. It's really further evidence that the circle of life cannot be broken. And in that context, the mini documentary produced by Defiant Astronaut Media out of Toronto by Josh Parley and his exceptional team. Uh, this has already been considered by some as very much up there along with the best work that ESPN has done with 30 for 30. It's superbly narrated by one of the best sportscasters in the country, Ken Reed from Sportsnet. And even though I know it, it, it's about my father, I, I think the feedback we're getting is that this mini documentary um, really does an exceptional job of capturing the spirit of how golf really is the perfect metaphor for life, the many hurts, the many missed shots along the way. But it also reminds us that there's just certain things you don't want to miss and that you always have a chance to tee it up again and again and again.
It's never too late to experience life's most enchanted moments. So you can imagine there's a lot to look forward to in both Scotland and Canada. Who knows what will unfold this month in the two towns named St. Andrews that share more links than we can possibly imagine. As always, thanks for watching Leaders and Legends, where you never know who you're going to meet or what you'll discover.